Hi, in this video we'll be talking about functions in Python. Functions in Python are often described as first-class objects. It just means they are objects no less than integers, strings, or our custom objects created by instantiating classes. In particular, it means functions may be used just like the other objects. They can be assigned to variables, they can be passed as arguments to other functions, and they can be returned from other functions. Let's have a look at each of these cases one by one. First, let's see how functions may be assigned to variables. Well, here we have a simple function that prints a character in rows and columns. It takes character rows and columns as three parameters and then prints the character in rows and columns. We can now call this function like so. Dance repeat. And now the character is capital X. And I want this character to be printed in four rows and six columns. Let's run this program. And here we have it. X in four rows and six columns. Now, let's assign the function to a variable. So, a equals dense repeat. a equals dense repeat. Now, we are assigning this function to a variable. And now we can use this variable as our function. So, let's call it with the character plus and let's have 8 rows and 15 columns. And let's run this program. As we can see, we now have 8 rows and 15 columns. Okay, the next thing we can do is pass a function as an argument to another function. Here's an example. Well, here we have the function we defined before, dance repeat. And now let's define a similar function. Let's call it scars repeat. It just adds more spaces around the characters. Here we have the only difference. More spaces, two spaces here and just one space here. Fine. And now let's create one more function. It will take a function as an argument and call it. So here is our repeat function. It takes a function as an argument. And here in the function body, it calls this function with these arguments. Now we can use the dunder name attribute. Dunder means underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. So this attribute here to retrieve the name of the function. So, using this attribute we'll know which function is actually called. Now let's use our repeat function twice. The first time we'll pass our dense repeat function as an argument to the repeat function and the second time we'll pass scars repeat as an argument to the repeat function. Okay. So, repeat, dance, repeat, now the character, capital X, six rows, eight columns. And just the same, so let me copy it, with one difference, here we want this cars repeat function with the same character rows and columns. So now we can run this code and this is what we get. Using the dance repeat function in six rows, eight columns and using this cars repeat function in six rows and eight columns. As you can see, here we have more spaces between the characters. 
Finally, let's see how functions may be returned from other functions. Let's modify the dance repeat function so that it returns a function. Dance repeat character one parameter, and here we have a nested function layout with two parameters, rows and columns. And now here is the body of the layout function. It practically does the same. It just prints the character in rows and columns. And this dense repeat function, which is the outer, the enclosing function, returns the layout function. So this function returns another function. Fine. If we now assign the result returned from the dense repeat function to a variable, what we actually assign is the layout function. So star pattern equals dense repeat and here we have a character, a star. So here we are assigning to star pattern what is returned by the dense repeat function and what is returned is the layout function. So this is the layout function. And now we can use star pattern as the layout function. What's interesting, it still remembers the character to print, although the enclosing dense repeat function has already returned. We call such functions closures. So star pattern, and this is our layout function, because the layout function was assigned to this variable, and we can call it like our layout function with two arguments, rows and columns. So let's say 10 rows, 8 columns. Well, if you want to learn more about closures, I have a video on them, so feel free to give it a watch. And now let's run this program, and this is what we get. Star in 10 rows and 8 columns. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.